Glory to Jesus Christ, Slava Jesus Christo. I'm Father Peter Galadza, the editor-in-chief of this resource, the Divine Liturgy and Anthology for Worship. And today is part three. I'm presenting you with part three of um, a multi-series or a multi-clip explanation of the different features of this book. And today I'm hoping that we can finish up the topic, why is this book so big? Um, the most basic reason uh, in addition to the reasons that were given in part one and part two, is that uh, we're talking about big things here. We're talking about important matters. There are few things in the life of a Christian that uh, are more important than the divine liturgy. And so um, in attempts to, to make sure that there is a communication of the sense that this is a very, very significant matter, a weighty matter, an important matter, um, we have a fulsome text. Now, what I'm about to say should um, not be uh, misinterpreted, okay? So just because uh, I am very committed to proclaiming the truth that these words deserve reverence, okay, so there's the whole dimension of reverence for the word, just because of that doesn't mean that I'm going to uh, immediately look down upon those who produce little pamphlets uh, for the Divine Liturgy. I've produced many of these myself. I, I use them. But in essence, what, what I want to point out is that if something really is important, and if the people of God are to really exercise their royal priesthood, then it, I think, really behooves us to at least have as a goal. We might not be able to achieve it all the time, but it's important for us to have as a goal the idea of getting them in every conceivable way to understand what they're supposed to be doing during the Divine Liturgy and understand that these words deserve reverence. And many of you are familiar with Marshall McLuhan's adage, the medium is the message. Well, this is a medium, okay? Um, in some ways, I mean, this, this phone book uh, might be used as, as an analogy. I mean, it's, uh, it's nice and, and, and light. It's um, it's not something that most people would be would consider cumbersome. Well, actually, nowadays they frequently produce a, a smaller version, so it's even less cumbersome. But uh, as we all know, um, we throw these away. Have you ever been at an office when the telephone books are being collected and you get these piles of things that are going to be just disposed of, you know, pulped? Well, the, the medium is the message suggests that if these texts are really important, they have to be given to us in a medium that is also weighty and important. And by the way, uh, I don't know whether many of you are aware of this, but I've got a lot of uh, Jewish friends who will send me emails sometimes, the, the devout ones, the ones that are really observant and pious, they will not even write the word God uh, in an email or on a piece of paper in full because they know that that piece of paper could just be thrown into the garbage with, with who knows what kind of trash. So they will write G slash D when they're writing God. Gives you a sense of the, uh, the ancient, uh, authentically religious approach to reverence for the word. And so in the interest of counteracting the influence of a throwaway culture. Okay, so we're trying to counteract a throwaway culture, obviously not just you know, during the Divine Liturgy with the kind of books that we produce, but, but throughout. You know, we, we're, we're supposed to be respecting the, the environment. We're supposed to be uh, cherishing God's gifts. In the uh, interests of doing that, counteracting that, that throwaway mentality, uh, we've got a book here that um, most people would not want to throw away. Even if they don't like it, if they get it, they're not going to throw it in, in the garbage. And finally, one last thing that um, I think I, sh I should point out about the, the use of, of pamphlets like this in our church, uh, we become very, very sensitive to the whole question of intellectual property, uh, which 
obviously uh, can become uh, maybe an overly sensitive issue in, in some domains. But the fact is that the Synod of Bishops of the Ukrainian Greco-Catholic Church has an appropriate copyright on the English translation of the Divine Liturgy. Now, you are listening to someone who represents an institution that is probably one of the few institutions in the entire world that actually, on an annual basis, pays royalties to the Synod of Bishops of the Ukrainian Greco-Catholic Church in exchange for the right to uh, reproduce their uh, promulgated English translation of the Divine Liturgy, translation that first appeared in 1988. So um, even at that level, in view of the fact that sometimes the, 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 the pamphlets are breaking all sorts of copyright law, it might be something worth considering. It might be worth thinking, do I not want to, in fact, get my people to use on a regular basis this resource, which uh, demonstrates reverence for the word, because the medium is the message, and because this, in addition to everything else, enables us to counteract that mentality that um, things, even the most profound things, are here today and gone tomorrow. Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava Jesus Christ.